Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. In this video, we're going to be looking at Intel's latest series of chips, their Meteor Lake series. This is going to be focusing on Intel Core Ultra 7 155H, and it doesn't look good. In fact, it looks really, really poor. Specifically for those of us that are looking at this to be used in a handheld, this is not a chip that we want at all for a number of reasons. So I'm going to be going over that in this particular video on all the reasons why this is not what Intel needed, specifically in this particular time, and it's pretty crazy because not too long ago, just two years ago, did Intel have a their Tiger Lake chip. So the Intel 1135G7 or 1165G7, this is the GPD Win 3, and that had that chip. And that chip was actually Intel's last best chip, in my opinion. Last best mobile chip, because it did really well at lower TDPs and scaled up really nicely to higher TDPs. There were a number of driver problems with that particular chipset. However, performance at every particular range was actually really good. Only with Intel Alder Lake did things start to get really bad, which gets me to my next point where I've been trying to temper expectations from a lot of people because of Intel's own claims of them getting 2x performance over their GPU over their previous generations. Now, because I've looked at Alder Lake and compared it to the 680M, the 6800U, I both basically told everyone, don't don't look at anything that Media Lake is because it's still, even at 2x, no matter which way we look at this across all the different scales, it's not going to be impressive enough. And we're going to be talking about that in just a moment. So up first, let's take a look at some other reviews made by other people. Up first, we're going to take a look at what Phronix does done. Now, if you're interested, all the sources will be in the description field below, so go ahead and feel free to click on any of those if you want to. I'm going to just be briefly taking a look at here because they did a bunch of tests and their angle that they look at it is via Linux and specifically through CPU benchmarks. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward to the end of their particular results. Now, again, if you want more details, you can find out everything there. But out of 370 CPU benchmarks that they've done on Linux between the 7840U, AMD 7840U, and Intel's 155H, AMD 7840U beat it around 80% of the time which is not a great start for Intel here. And if we go down, we can see the geometric mean of all test results. And what they got was a 28% lead for AMD's 7840U. This is not a great result. However, because we uh, generally people that are going to be viewing this video care about handouts, we care about gaming performance. I'm going to go and pivot over to what ETA Prime has done. Now, ETA Prime has taken a look at a Meteor Lake laptop and gotten some results from uh, time Spy. Now, this is a synthetic benchmark, but the results that they show are pretty good, having a Time Spy score of 3913. However, the more important parts here is to look at what that is composed of. So, the graphics score and the CPU score. The CPU score at almost 11,000 actually is pretty decent. However, we don't know how much power has been pushing into the system. Meteor Lake needs a ton of power just to extract most of its performance out of it, which we'll take a look at in just a moment as well. But if we take a look at the graphics score of 3516, that is pretty nice, especially if you think about it from older 7840U results. However, my boy Cypheray has been working hard on the 7840U, and it's got a score, a time size score of 3616. Now, all of a sudden, it doesn't look all that impressive, especially when we take a look at the graphics score from this, this synthetic bench. We can see that the graphics score on the 70, uh, 7840U with 780M GPU, we're looking at 3283 graphics score and a CPU score of 8518. This is using... AMD's latest driver, which I have been informed by Cypher that uh, AMD is pushing a lot of power into this package by default, more so than it did in previous drivers, so a lot of things are skewed, and being able to get better performance on TimeSpy with the latest AMD drivers is a lot easier. Most likely, AMD did this to kind of shrink the gap of what that looked like from synthetic benchmarks and also a bunch of other tests. It will push more power into the system as a result, so it's not going to be like free performance. You're actually going to be using more power to get that performance. But when we take a look at it from this lens, we're only looking at what, 8 to 10% performance difference on the GPU side, which is great, but not enough, especially when we start thinking about the lower end. I'm going to go ahead and pivot over to Notebook, Notebook Check's review on their 155H as well. Again, all the sources will be in the description field below. If we take a look here, this is the Witcher 3. This is 1080p results. Now, if we take a look here, we're going to see that it's getting 23.3 FPS average. Uh, and AMD 70, 780M, the 7840U, there's a bunch of different uh, laptops that they tested. So there's going to be different types of heatsink solutions that are on there. And we can see that AMD 7840U is still handily beating Intel's solution here at 1080p. Uh, obviously, there are also 780M that does a little bit worse. However, one thing that uh, 
Notebook Check did was take a look at power efficiency and divide that by performance. What we see is that the uh, 155H gets 0.4623 FPS per watt, whereas on the top end, the 7040U gets basically 0.6 uh, FPS per watt. The Apple M3 does uh, exceedingly better, almost twice as better in this particular instance. So looking at some other benchmarks, they took a look at uh, GTA 5, also at 1080p, and we can see that this is just one test that really doesn't fare well at all on Intel's Meteor Lake. We're getting around 13.1 FPS at 1080p uh, at these particular settings, and AMD 7040U is doing really well in this particular instance. If we go over to Strange Brigade, 7040U is top marks where the Intel Meteor Lake is just below it. Far Cry 5, once again, we're going to see AMD 7040U getting 40 FPS, where Intel's Meteor Lake is 33 FPS, and so on and so forth. We'll look at the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark. 7040U's top marks here, once again, Intel is pretty far below this. Elder Lake is outperforming Meteor Lake here, so this is most likely a driver issue that needs to be sorted, uh, but 18.2 FPS, even if that doubled, we're still going to only see like a 20% performance improvement over the 7840U, but you're going to need to push a lot of power into that platform to get that result. Now, this brings me to the last point here that I want to talk about is that this is something, again, that was very prominent even in Tiger Lake days. Now, even though Tiger Lake does a scale really well in TDP from, from low TDP to high TDP, it became evident early on, especially when I was looking at it, that there were a lot of problems with newer games, especially with a lot of uh, te uh, texture bugs where VRAM was an issue, but there's just a lot of things that were just outright broken. Resident Evil 7 was broken, so we had to use uh, DXVK. So there's just a bunch of stuff that we needed to do the community to step in to fix things. Likewise, if we were to think about this, Starfield was broken on day one, didn't work at all. And then they had a day one driver that came out that also had uh, broken results. And even two weeks later, this person was uh, responding that in 30 minutes, the game would all always crash. So this is something that, again, Intel needs to fix. And Intel is behind the eight ball here. Unfortunately, Intel is behind the eight ball because when game developers are making games, they're not even thinking about Intel at all. They're thinking about NVIDIA first and then maybe AMD second and Intel not at all. So Intel has to do all this kind of catch up while all this stuff is happening and it's not a great result. The net effect of this is that it needs a tremendous amount of uh, power to even get anywhere. If we take a look at this graph, and this is something I showed earlier on, at 15 watt, we're showing that the 155H is uh, far under what the 7040U is. Now, no one really does tests like I do where we do 5 watt and 10 watt tests across a myriad of games. So it's not looking good for the Meteor Lake series from Intel here that they really need to improve the entire core package on how much power is consumed to get anywhere across the finish line because we really need to start pushing it up to just 30 watts just for Intel's Meteor Lake just to get its legs. That is a non-starter for handhelds. So hopefully this video has been informative in showing why Intel's Meteor Lake is not anywhere a good chip for any mobile platform really just because it needs so much power. AMD's six-month-old 7840U is still a much better chip, and now their Hawk Point is going to be coming out soon, as well as Strix Point, which is going to be their more expensive model and will have a bigger GPU, but that's still uh, a, a while away before we see that. So uh, this is just a quick understanding of why we're not going to really see Meteor Lake. Now, Intel could offer some type of incentive, a uh, financial incentive for companies to uh, use Meteor Lake in handhelds, but I don't personally see it at this particular moment. It just doesn't make a whole bunch of sense. I hope this video was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time. And thanks for watching.